What is the best computer for music production that you can get in 2024? I'll bet it's not the one that you're thinking, and I'll bet it's cheaper than what you think it is. Let's talk about it. Hey everyone, I'm Cole Caparoon. Thank you for stopping by for another video. I hope that this video helps you because I have a kind of interesting take on what I think the best computer for music production is for the vast majority of people, and it's actually fairly affordable. So first, let me get a couple things out of the way. One, we're talking Apple computers here. I'm not into Windows. Uh, Y'all can sound off in the comments all you want that you could build your gamer PC and it'll stomp on any Mac, and you could have all those arguments you want down in the comments. I encourage you to do so. Please tell me why you prefer a PC over a Mac. Uh, but for today's video, we're talking Apple computers, and obviously we're talking Apple Silicon because that's where they're at. Honestly, I'm a huge fan of the Apple Silicon computers, and we just got the M3 chips released in the latest laptops, uh, and so that's why I figured it, it's probably time to make this video because I don't think the newest computers, the M3, the biggest, most powerful ones, I don't think that's the right move for most people. So first I wanna go over uh, which computer to choose if you're just a studio person. If all you're working on is music, you don't do any content creation, you don't do any video editing or anything like that. I wanna talk about that, and then I'll, I'll touch on if you do video work as well, uh, like, like a lot of us do, because it is a different computer choice, I think, if you do some video work. Now I have this test session that I run on all my computers computers to figure out where they stack up against each other. And the session is 120 channels of audio in Pro Tools, each of them with full plugins. So we've got two instances of EQ, two instances of compression, two instances of lo-fi, uh, which is a saturation plugin, uh, two instances of reverb, and two instances of delay. So we are talking 240 instances of reverb in this session, the stock D-verb that comes with Pro Tools. And I'll put a link down below to this Pro Tools session if you want to download it and see what it runs on your system. So that way, uh, you know, if it, you can see how your computer stacks up to these. So with all of these plugins in all of these channels, I hit play and then we see what the numbers look like. Now on the original M1 MacBook Pro that I have, uh, that was running at 69% uh, CPU usage. Then I got the M1 Max Mac Studio for my main studio computer, and that was running just over 42% CPU usage. And then my latest computer is the M2 Max MacBook Pro, and it is running uh, just around 29% CPU usage with this insane session playing back. The M2 Max is so powerful that I could literally play back this crazy Pro Tools session and edit video at the exact same time, which is just <laughs> so insane. And so that's why I wanted to jump on here and make this video because if you are someone interested in buying a new computer in 2024, I don't actually think the biggest, craziest one is, is not even necessary, even a little bit. So what I think is the best choice for most studios and for most people doing music production is the M2 Pro chip in the Mac Mini. It's $1,299. I'll link it down below as well. I'll put links to all of this stuff down below. Those links do go to Sweetwater. and Sweetwater sponsoring this video. Thank you, Sweetwater, for sponsoring this video. But every computer I talk about, I'll put a link down below so you can go check it out. Look at prices and specs and whatnot. But I think the M2 Pro in the Mac Mini, for the vast majority of people working in audio, if you're just doing audio, you're not doing composition, you're not doing crazy number of virtual instruments, I think that is by far the best computer out right now for most people because it's $1,299. You can get it with enough RAM and enough hard drive space to, to be just fine for anything that you're doing. And I just think that that is a crazy deal. $1,299 for that computer is kind of insane. Now, when the M1 first came out, I have the regular M1 chip in my MacBook Pro, my 13-inch MacBook Pro, and it was a game changer for working on video as well. It's definitely not in the same ballpark as my M1 Max or my M2 Max chips, but it was a monster compared to the previous Intel machines. So I say that just to say that the M2 Pro is still a very capable computer 
if you do some light video work, more than capable enough. Okay, so next step up would be someone who's a full-on professional, this is your full-time job. You do big sessions, 100 plus tracks all the time. You do uh, lots of virtual instruments, but you don't yet do video work. Actually, it doesn't matter if you do video work or not, because the next step up, I would recommend the same computer. If you want a desktop computer, uh, I would recommend the Mac Studio with the M2 Max chip in it, because that's a monster chip. It is crazy how efficient it is on audio. Like I've never even come close to maxing it out. And it is crazy how fast it is for video work. Now I say that for the desktop because uh, they haven't yet updated the Mac Studio for the M3 stuff yet. The M3 stuff is only in the laptop. So if you're looking for a desktop, I think they start at $2,000, $1,999. And it, it's what I have. I have the M1 Max. But uh, the new version of that with the M2 Max is what I would recommend if you want a desktop. 2000 bucks. it's got tons of ports on it, it's got an SD card reader in the front of it, just a rock solid desktop machine. And it's what I've been using for about a year and a half now since it came, or maybe longer maybe two years now since it came out. And then of course, if you want a laptop, then you might as well go M3 Max because it is the latest and greatest and that is gonna be a monstrous machine. Now, if you are on the M2 Max, you should not upgrade to the M3 Max. If you're on the M1 Max, I don't even think you should upgrade to the M3 series of chips. Uh, if you're on like an M1 or an M1 Pro, then upgrading to an M3 Max it will be a significant jump in performance. Man, these computers are getting so good now that we just don't need to update. There, there was such an enormous leap when they went to their own silicon, uh, and especially once we got to the M1 Max. The Intel stuff to the M1 was crazy, and the M1 to the M1 Max was crazy. But now we're, we're taking smaller incremental jumps, and I, I just don't think... You know, I, I'm guilty of always wanting the latest and greatest and the most powerful thing, but I just don't think there's any reason to upgrade anymore because I've been editing all my videos and doing all my studio work on my Mac Studio that has the M1 Max, and it's great. Like, it's incredible. So anyway, I hope that helps you. Those are my recommendations for a computer for music production in 2024. Uh, it doesn't even matter what they come out with. My recommendations are not going to change because these are so over overpowered for audio production. It's it's just kind of insane. Uh, let's talk RAM real quick. Uh, I have run on my original M1 MacBook Pro, 16 gigabytes of RAM. That was more than enough for me if you're running a ton of virtual instruments, maybe go higher. My Mac Studio that I'm running now is my main studio computer has 32 gigabytes of RAM in it, which is again, the base model for 1999. Uh, but anyway, that's, that's what I've been running. Hope that helps you guys. Thank you, Sweetwater, for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to hit the links down below. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.